Hello, everyone, and welcome to Keyframers, the animated collaborative, <laughs> collaborative coding live stream <laughs> where we bring you imaginative, imaginative, imaginative user interfaces to life. Uh, I'm your host, Stephen Shaw, but you may know me as at Shashaw. And I'm your host, David Korshid, also known as David K. Piano. <laughs> and together we are coding compadres, animation amigos, boolean buddies, keyframe companions. Do you, do you have any more? Uh, no, I, no. <laughs> I'll probably come up with some later. We'll yeah, see. yeah, they'll, they'll come up on the fly. Yeah, so we're going to be creating an animation from scratch live on the stream using HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. So uh... <laughs> That is right. Uh, is everything coming through OK on the stream for everyone? If, if any levels are off, just let us know in the chat, and we'll, we'll adjust things as we go. Uh, yeah. how's, how's your day been, David? Uh, it's been all right. How's your day been? Uh, a little hectic, mostly just getting the stream set up, but now cool, I well don't care. Let's get started. I think we're good. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, you want you want to tell us a little bit about what we're uh, what we're doing today? All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and post it in the chat. Uh, Shaw and I have decided on this cool little fluent design animation. Yeah. So uh, this is what we're gonna be recreating, and we it. chose this because there's a there's a few cool techniques in here. Um, we have not done it yet though. So this is completely, who knows how this is going to go. It might be great. It might be terrible. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a lot of interesting elements to this one. Um, going to need some help from uh, flipping and a few other nice, uh, nice techniques. Uh, let's see. Is that, is that link in the, in the chat? Yeah, okay. just send it there. Cool. Uh, so yeah, let's let me get this over into uh, GIF Scrubber, and we can kind of take a a slow motion look at everything. I can slow it down a little bit. Oh, yeah. So speed. in case you all don't uh, aren't familiar with uh, GIF Scrubber, GIF Scrubber, however you uh, pronounce GIF, it's um it's something that me and Shaw use all the time when we're looking at dribble animations. Uh, this allows you to just take any GIF and right-click it. You could open it in HIF Scrubber. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Uh, and you could scrub through it and inspect every single keyframe, basically. So uh, it makes it really easy to animate it yeah. really precisely. Yeah, it, it comes in really handy when you're doing these kinds of recreations because you can see exactly how things are moving around and what's going where um, helps you get a better sense of the timing of things as well i feel like that one just dropped there we go so yeah this is a simple little inbox kind of ui uh, we've got a loader at the very beginning here and then that transitions smoothly into this alert of seven new emails, which then expands into the full UI. Okay. All right, let's get code pinning. All right. So I've got code pin collab mode up over here. Um, zoomed in a little bit so that y'all can read the code a little bit better as we, as we write. If the code is too small, just move your computer closer to your face or something. I don't know if we're going to make it bigger. That, that'll, <laughs> that'll usually help. Uh, but yeah, both of us are actually editing this live, so uh, we'll be seeing the changes. Oh, hey, who's typing that? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> we've, <clears throat> we've got it all set up and ready to go. Uh, so. Tell me a little bit about what this junk is here, David. OK, so this is just normal CSS that I put. Um, I, I, nor much normal is different. a strong word, David. I, I, I know. OK, so first one, OK, everything box size and border box. Sure. Second one, this is a little more controversial. <laughs> uh, so 
having everything positioned relative, I know people are going to be like, oh, stacking context, and uh, what if I want something positioned as something else, blah, blah, blah. To me, the mental model of having absolutely everything, and that was a pun, by the way, absolutely, everything positioned relative to the parents uh, makes things a whole lot easier than having to think, okay, what's this going to be positioned relative to? So now you know the answer. It's always the parents. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I, it, I yeah, understand. We find that becomes a problem and we can get rid of it. But. I, I understand where you're coming from with that. <laughs> it's, it's just very, very strange. Uh, one thing with a lot of these uh, kinds of rules that I go ahead and do is add in the pseudo elements as well. And just out of habit, because I've been developing for a long time, I still use a single colon. Is that is that kosher? I know it's technically supposed to be. So what SAS is going to do is it's going to you know translate that single colon into double colons for you. So I don't even remember. I think with pseudo elements, you have two colons. Uh, with um, you know uh, pseudo selectors, you have one. Yes. But it does not matter. Just let your preprocessor take care of the heavy lifting for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. Uh, and I, I just put the link in the chat. I think it was getting filtered uh, from, from David posting. Um, our, our links might be uh, disabled in the chat. So uh, sorry about that. But you can check that out now uh, if you want to get a closer look for yourself or show the, the Dribble author some love. Uh, let's see, who is that by? By Nico. Um, very, very cool little animation there. All right. And All right, so here's here's how we're going to separate this out. Uh, at first, Shaw is going to be working on the loader, and I'm going to be sort of doing the, uh, the background stuff for setting up each of the screens. And so uh, in the animation, there's three different screens. There's the loader, and then it sort of expands into this seven new email sort of thing. And then those like spread out and then you have the full email clients. So by the way, this is fluent design, but I'm pretty sure this is downright impossible to do on windows <laughs> or Mac for that matter. Uh, but it's a cool little concept. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. So three states starting with loading, going into kind of an, uh, notification, uh, state and then uh, the full the full UI view. All right. Uh, All right. So first, let's get everything centered. Um, I'm using Display Flex to do that, and so that way we have our where we're going to call this little panel UI loading. I, I like to prefix it with UI just because. I actually don't know why, but it makes sense. <laughs> it does it. <laughs> Does it make sense? Uh, I don't know. What, what do you usually do? Uh, I I'm pretty much a BIM guy. I'll I'll stick to that pretty pretty well until I'm getting rushed in a project, and then I will uh, just do whatever comes to mind uh, to get it get it in there quickly. Uh, okay. So, and with the with the HTML and body, you've got everything. Height and width 100%, margin zero, padding zero. Oh, you're going fixed width here. All right. Yeah, just for now. So what, when I'm doing like quick little concepts, at first, I start with pixels. So I'll measure on the screen. And if you're on a Mac, if you press Command Shift 4, then that's like the partial um, screenshot tool. And it gives you exact measurements. And so while I have this, uh, GIF scrubber, GIF scrubber, open. I'm trying to be GIF neutral to everyone, so I don't offend <laughs> anyone. Offending everyone. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, when I'm, uh, you know, using that, I could measure each element precisely, and then I could uh, later translate that into relative units so that it works for all devices. But pixels are easiest to work with for now. Yeah. One one utility I've started using. I think Chris Coyier um, often extols the virtues of is uh, what is it pixel snap and it actually gives you a nice little um, overlay that you can measure with uh, gives you the, the dimensions nice and large uh, it also helps you with um, 
with finding the space in between things. Uh, this portion of the UI isn't good for that, but if I go down here, I can see a little bit of the distance between between things. Uh, it's got some settings you can you can play with to get the get the measuring just right. Uh, if the if the elements aren't distinct enough, it'll it'll sometimes uh, bleed together. Yes. Uh, okay, we've got a question in the chat here. Uh, is the code going to be put on GitHub afterwards, uh, and or have the pin shared on social media? Yes. We're uh, definitely sharing the pin. Right. the The pin will be available. Uh, you know, we'll probably extract it to a, a gist gist. Uh, is that a, <laughs> is that another holy war here? I think it's uh, gist because it's like just the gist. Right. Uh, but it might be GIST just because you don't say GitHub. Right. You probably don't want to say GitHub. It's GitHub. Yes. So that's another contentious one right there. I think from now on, we should just spell it out. So G-I-F and G-I-S-T. Yeah. Steve G yeah. is trolling in the chat saying, pretty sure it's pronounced. And then he just writes it out. So no, I, I'm not helpful pretty, to I'm anyone. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Yeah. I, I see you guys. Okay. Uh, and one of the things I remembered as I was typing, uh, CodePen has init built in, so you don't have to actually manually create all of your elements. You can uh, just do some fancy text like that. Be at the end of it, hit tab, and it automatically expands. It's basically oh, wow. using um, kind of CSS selector syntax to uh, to build your HTML uh, without any kind of preprocessor or anything like that. Do you, do you ever use any HTML preprocessors, David? Uh, so funny enough, I don't. I just do the HTML straight up. <laughs> uh, yeah. I... Just because a, a lot of people bother with it, but um, to me, HTML is the part of your code that you touch the least. And CSS and JavaScript, those are sort of in competition for uh, which one you touch the most. Yeah. Let's see here. All right. Uh, All right. So while he's making these little squares, um, I'm using this data states data attribute just to identify what state we're currently in. And there's going to be three. There's going to be the loading state that we, uh, we're doing right now. There's going to be the um, halfway state. It's sort of weird. It's like the header and seven new emails is off to the side by a little bit. Don't know what's up with that. Artistic choice, I suppose. And then we're going to expand into the full view. So loading, half, and full. Yes. And I'm uh, doing some ugly classes here. So stop me at any point if that becomes too offensive. It's okay. It's CodePen. And this is one of the great things about CodePen, too, is that if your classes are messy, if your code's messy, I mean, Somebody else you're not will shipping come in it and to fix production. It. Uh, I mean, I wish. <laughs> CodePen needs that. Like, hey, fix my code. That'd be a cool feature. It would indeed. Uh, is this an opportunity for display grid? I think so. Okay. Now I'm going to have to pull up the documentation here because I do not know grid as well as I should. So if you're learning grid to anyone who's listening, hopefully people are listening. I mean, that's why we set this whole damn stream. Anyway, uh, you could go to learncssgrid.com, but uh, also um, Jen Simmons and Rachel Andrews do incredible guides on CSS grid. And I believe that there's a new YouTube channel called Layout Land which talks about just all the different things you can do with grid and flexbox and different layout things in CSS. Yes, I just referenced that really quick and uh, remembered the grid template columns bit there, uh, basically just setting up two, two small columns there. Oh, something you did fixed my code and then it broke it again. Uh, well, uh, notorious B1T, <laughs> uh, however you would.
pronounce that, uh, is asking, why is Grid more suited than Flexbox? Uh, and in this case, it's it, it could go either way. It's not specifically needed to be Grid. Um, I'm just trying to get in the habit of, uh, of using Grid more often than not. And then... So and, and in this instance, with four elements and trying to get them in actually a grid shape, it works a little bit better than flex right here because, let's see, width 100 pixels. Oh, they got to be less than that. 550, something like that. All right. Yeah, and also with, uh, with CSS grid, that one I would use when I know exactly number one, how many items I'm going to have, and number two, where those items are going to be exactly. That's what Grid is for. Flexbox is for, I don't know how many items I'm going to have in here, uh, but align them in a sane way anyway. And then using width and height fit content. I can avoid setting a specific unit. So I should probably use M's. Which ones do I have here? Those look beautiful. It's it's looking a little bit more like the like the comp. Um, yeah. That darn I think it's the off black, but we're not gonna split hairs. <laughs> I think in my white is definitely not that white. It's supposed to be transparent, which those are little details that I'll do later. Yeah. Let me pull up my inspector here. Oh, goodness. That's going to that's gonna be a bit of a mess. Let's see. All right, so while he's doing that, I'm just setting up each of the screens in the background. I have them all to uh, set to display none, so it's not going to bug shop while I do it. And so right now I'm basically just trusting that they're correct. <laughs> we'll we'll find out soon yeah. enough. Okay. Strange. Uh I'm not sure if this is a grid thing or or what's happening here, but my right, so... vertical centering is is having some trouble. Ah oh, yeah, that's the easiest thing to do in CSS. <laughs> Anyway, um, this load square container, let's look at the load square. Um, load square container looks correct, but in right. load square, let's, let's make that uh, centered. And so hopefully it'll update mm. onwards in load square. No. Margin auto here, let's do this. Oh, that broke it. <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've tried, uh, I've got, Display flex on the UI loading container uh, with oh, justify right. center and center, and then normally uh, even without that, just using margin auto will will fix it. But that does not seem. All right. So case. looking at load square container, it might be that the margins are screwing with it. Um, now let's look at that again. We have UI loading, which is display block. Oh, you know what? That might be my fault. <laughs> what did you, all right what did you watch ah, hey. all right so <laughs> what we need to switch stream to blame david for everything <laughs> where shaw makes normal code and david messes it up somehow <laughs> what was it that that messed with it so i was setting display blocks somewhere higher and the specificity was higher so uh, yeah that was sort of screwing with your thing okay. so um i Changed everything in display grid. Everything's good. Yes. Okay. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Now, the funny thing here is this justify content center and align item center, those also work for display grid. And really? Yep. Hey, how about that? Uh, oh, so I could probably drop that from the container. Do justify content center line items center. Well, hmm. no, because I'm I'm just using. Here, yeah, let's have those back over here. Oops, this one too. 
We've got a hashtag right. blame David in the, um, in the chat. So. Yeah, so. basically. All right, cool. So the loader's looking pretty ace yeah. right now. Yeah, it's all right. All right. Um, so let's look at the animation of them again. Let's do real time. All right, they slide into place and then slide out. Stop and go. Okay. I'm going to take a real rough pass at this. Oh, is that a foghorn? Uh, that was a vehicle traveling down the road. Okay. Let's do fifty. Oops. Which uh, which highway do you live on? <laughs> it is a residential neighborhood that does not have law-abiding citizens traveling it. That's ah, great. All right, let's see what Shaw's working on. All right, so you're setting up the keyframes to make each of the squares move. Yeah. And so looking at the animation, um, which by the way, uh, I don't think the people on Twitch got the link to it. Uh, I, um, I did, I did get it, um, get it over there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, wow, now I'm just reading the chat. All right, blame David, great. <laughs> Anyway, so I think the strategy Shaw is going for is to create an animation for each one of these squares and then um, uh, what's it called? Stagger it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Perfect. Look at that. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So beautiful. Gosh, guys. All right. There we go. Job, job done. Job I, done. Yeah, that's it for the show. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, overflow hidden here. Uh, yeah. That's probably a good idea. And probably going to need to bump that up a little bit. OK. And some of you might be wondering why I have a 50% frame here, when if we left that out, it'd technically go you know, from negative 80 viewport widths all the way over to the other side with 80 viewport widths. With uh, CSS animations, the easing or the timing function that you use applies to each keyframe and so in order to get that kind of pause in the middle that that we want from the uh from the original how they settle into place before heading back out uh, we need that 50 percent keyframe so that the uh the timing function will apply to that as well let's see great and let me open up my favorite site cubicbezier.com is it bezier is that how you uh, i think it? it's bezier because bezier. he was french and bezier. you know how french they have those curly mustaches that's where the bezier curve comes from ah that, that pretty sure that makes sense uh so this site i use to just get rough uh rough curves with a GUI to use in the timing function. So I've got right here, nice cubic bezier, bezier. And so I'm going to apply this in the first keyframe here. And let's see how that changes things. Yeah, you see that nice slowdown we're getting? Ah, that's feeling good. Okay. And then we'll kind of do the reverse where we get a long lead in and then a slower lead out for the next frame here. Let me see. I always forget which one it needs to be applied to. I'm thinking it's going to have to actually go in 50% here. 
oh, for this tagger? Uh, no, in in the uh, when you're doing an animation timing function in the keyframes. Feels like it's right, but it's hard to tell. Let me slow it down a little bit. Yeah, actually, might need to move that here. Don't click the body right now. <laughs> now I'm some click then <laughs> listeners in. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I'm I'm gonna try it. Oh, hey. Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Those certainly are some event listeners. Let's see. And then I always like to clean up my curves a little bit using nice round decimals, if that's possible. You can see the easy, the timing function is not applying correctly. So let me do that. Yeah, I think that's what we need. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Uh, let me see. Someone. Someone was asking, would it be easier to stagger it in JavaScript? Uh, how do you determine which is best to use? Uh, this, this is a very personal decision that, <laughs> that you'll have to come to terms with yourself. Uh, but it really depends on what kind of tools you have available and uh, what kind of dependencies you want to incur. Um, typically, what I'll do in this instance is just a simple nth child kind of loop. Uh, David insisted on using SAS or SCSS, uh, so I have no clue how to actually do that. <laughs> so All right, well, let's take a look because loops are so, so much easier uh, with this. So you want to add a delay, yes. right? So, okay, like a negative delay, so that some start before the well, others. Or... Uh, no, it should, it should be a positive delay because we won't have infinite on here. All right, uh, oh, so okay, here, yeah, not that bad. use this. I set up a nice little for loop for okay. you. Okay, and then cache, exactly. cache i. Is that the correct way to pronounce that? Uh, dollar sign i. Dollar sign i. Does it have to be in the little <laughs> curly right brackets like that? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's weird like that. So you do, pound. Um, okay, hold on, pound. Pound. <laughs> pound squiggly dollar sign i and squiggly and there you go good gravy <laughs> yep all right so let's... well so so now over here what you could do is delete your code hey hey i times uh point one second so uh okay yeah. something's happening <laughs> that but is, anyway that is certainly an effect yes yeah, yeah. So that's what you would do. Uh, yes, this is the premiere of Keyframers. Uh, Bollum in the chat. Uh, so forgive any rush, any any rough edges uh, as we're figuring things out. Uh, that's that's feeling pretty good. <laughs> Let me see. I gotta check out the original here. Okay, so there's is actually the one on the right is delayed in first and the one on the left so with uh with grid is is there a way to reverse the layout what do you mean uh so that the the first element starts on the right Oh yeah, so you could use uh, grid ordering, grid um, ordering, I believe. Yeah, you, you could say order. It's, all right, here, let's look at the animation again. All right, so what happens is 
first one to come in is second one from the right. Ah, you know what you could do? Um, you could just, because uh, it's still in the same order, one, two, three, four. It's just reversed, sort of like Hebrew or Arabic text. Right. It's just going the other way. Um, so with that said, uh, I wonder if there's a property for grid where you could just tell it to go display reverse. Uh, you know what? Don't even need all of that business. Let's go a little old school here. All right, old school. And I like where this is going. Uh, and text direction, right? Tell. Yep. Direction. LTR or RTL. Got to add a little bit of a buffer here because of white space. Hey, look at that. <laughs> who, Perfect. Who needs display grid? Nobody really. No, no I'm kidding. Everyone needs display grid in their life. It's very, very important. Uh, and then let's do text align center to make sure everything is nice and centered. That's pretty nice, uh, but let's let's take a little little closer look here because it's actually more than just translating. There's a little bit of a scale you can see on them, so let's mm -hmm. let's see if we can mess with that too. And uh, I think we need a little bit more extreme of a of an ease timing as well right so by the way while you're doing that if he wants to just click on the background the the pukish green looking area um you could cycle through each of the states that were needed hey how about that got three different states here mm -hmm. i'm gonna just put a little fun text in each of them yeah Full is overflowing here, so there we go. Yeah, that that's one thing about uh, display flex that often causes problems when you're, especially when you're using it on kind of a, a full container. Uh, one thing I do instead of applying uh, justify content center and align items center is commenting that out, and then let's see on our app saying margin auto and yes that might break something later but uh, one thing that does is allows the the content to overflow naturally uh, as soon as David stops changing things Sorry. Actually, no, <laughs> you're fine uh, let me turn off the auto updating preview uh, so you can see the scroll bar down here. Well, you can't see it because our faces are in the way. Uh, but you can actually see the correct content. Well, except on that. Oh, because he took it out. Never mind. All right. So anyway, fun aside. Um, let me go back in here. What would you say is the font size on those seven new emails? Text? Seven new emails. I would uh, say seven blends or something. Yeah, yeah, that's probably a good starting point. Just go with that. Yeah, someone someone's asking for the uh, the code pin link. Yeah, we haven't we haven't posted that just yet. Um, unfortunately, you can't actually see it change live um, with the collab mode and everything happening at the same time. Unfortunately. Yeah. And let's do let's do zero. Let's do one. Let's see. Because that's gonna feel a little bit better. This 
staggering is still not quite right. I think my text direction might be off. Let me pull up some documentation here. Oh, is it just direction? Is that right? Yes, it is not text direction. It is direction. Yeah, there we go. All right. Come on, chat. You got to point those things out to me. <laughs> when you see us make mistakes, please call them out because we will find them eventually, but not soon. And enough. we're not perfect. <laughs> well, What's coding while, you know, you're live streaming, that's a skill in itself that I've actually never done. Believe it or not, this is my first time doing this. Yeah, so. same here. All right. That's, that's also one thing I'll, I'll do is uh, when I'm setting up keyframes, I'll actually uh, duplicate the same keyframe to emulate a pause. Um, so I've got the same properties in effect from 40% to 60%, and that, mm -hmm. that gives you a little bit of a nice delay there. Santiago Mc McRib, I will ban you, uh, just so you know. <laughs> we don't want any, any GIF wars happening here. Right, so I'm half Spanish, so... I think it's pronounced GIF, you know, with the <laughs> J sound, or maybe YIF, depending on where you're from. I, I, I that don't, one. yeah, I don't think we should go with YIF. HIF, uh, yes. GIF. Yes. Yeah. Hey, did you insert that console.clear? I did. Do you want me to get rid of that? No, no, that is, that is amazing, because that's something I always do when I'm setting up my <laughs> pins, is just going ahead and inserting console.clear. That way you see what the last error you made is. Uh... Yeah, I've made so many mistakes where I was like, where is this error coming from? And I'm checking my code. I'm like, my code's perfect. What's wrong? And I'm like, oh, that's an error from like, you know, five minutes ago. Yeah. And so, by the way, my code's never perfect, so. <laughs> If you if you click through on the background, you can okay. sort of see the progress I'm making. <laughs> okay, so we've got seven new emails. Uh, let me check and those the really quick. Third one, based oddly. Yes, <laughs> a little bit. That's all right. Yeah. So, um, with complex UI animations like this, one of my strategies is don't think about animating at first. Think about like what is, you know, the the normal layout of it just without any animation how is it going to look and then you add animation afterwards so basically your source of truth is just the layout the static layout i'm on board with that okay uh so how's that how's that loader feeling is that is that about right Think. I think so, yeah. Yeah, let me, let me bump the font so. size down just a little bit. Font size. Let's do 10 picks. How's that feel? Whoa. Nope, that breaks everything. All right, leaving it as is. Cool. <laughs> Great. Uh, let's see. Uh, H. Jenning, Jennings in the chat asks, are you guys planning on doing a quick rundown of everything at the end? Yes, we will be doing uh, kind of a yeah. review at the end to show some of the techniques we used and, um, and help make sense of it all because <laughs> a lot of times it doesn't make sense until it's actually built, uh, at least in my projects. So Definitely not my projects. Yeah. Makes no sense whatsoever. Okay. Uh, so do you want to explain the JavaScript really quick? All right. Yeah. So what I'm doing here is setting up a um, simple state machine. Basically, we have three robot. states, loading, path, and full. And so I just have a you know, JSON set for that. Um, and so 
basically whenever you click on the body, you send this click event. Makes sense, right? And so um, what I'm doing is I'm just reading from this object. So if I'm on the loading state and I click or and I send a click event, then the object tells me I go to the half state. And same thing with half. If you click, I go to full. And full, when you click, you go back to loading. So I'm just reading from this object and cycling through loading, half, and full. And so the effect is when you click on the background, it's going to go through each of those states. And go through those states it does. Yep. Excellent. Uh, OK, and so that's what all this other business is handling. Yeah, so, so so this transition thing, that's just um, you don't, looking you up don't need what's that, the next right? thing. What? I sort of did. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so this send is, it takes the events, so this click thing, figures out the next state, and then it sets the data state attribute that we set up in the HTML over to what that state is. And so it cycles between loading, half, and full. And you're using window.app here. OK, yeah, is... so this is my guilty pleasure when, <laughs> when, when doing animations. But did you know that when you set an ID on an element, it becomes available to the global objects? This yes. has been a thing since, since IE 3 or 4 or something like crazy like that. Just something that's always been a part of the browser, the DOM API. And, thus and it's never going to go be. away. Yeah, yeah it's, it's one of those legacy things that that's always going to happen. Uh, instead, though, what I could do is I could say const app equals document dot query selector uh, app. And then I could just do app so that people don't yell at me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, either way, your element is getting selected and is is able to be used by your code. Uh, so right, yeah, we can we can go either way here. Uh, all right, so should we focus on the next state, uh, making sure we're good here? Uh, yeah. So next state, I just have that. Um, actually, that's sort of an intermediate state. Like, yes. all all that's happening is you have this seven new emails oddly off to the side. Uh, so what I'm focusing on right now is the last date, the UI screen full, just making sure we get the layout right. Do we want to work on that one? Uh, sure. Yeah. We can All right. There. And, and so, so, so what's cool about this whole state machine thing is I could just set data states to full at the top here in the HTML, and now I'm on that state. Yes. So. And that is happening where? Uh, how how does that okay? You've got current state here, machine dot initial. Wait. Yeah, that's just that's just the initial state, the loading state. Oh, okay. This is this is working because uh, of our CSS here. Or the yeah, CSS yeah, yeah. Setup? Because of the CSS. Okay. So this data state thing over here. Um, initially, I hide everything, and then depending on which state is selected, we're going to. Uh, we're going to show everything. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see that. And so you, other people probably have different ways of doing it. That's fine. Like they could just say like, if I'm on this date, then set this attribute. Whatever. It works the same way. It's not not a terribly difficult programming problem. <laughs> yeah. All right. So in this uh, UI screen full thing. I'm setting up a display grid, and I have grid template columns of two rems, 10 rems, and one FR, which stands for uh, Sorry, I'm trying to fractional. Find, I'm trying fractional to find where you're, where you're writing here. OK. Uh, OK, UI screen full. Here we are. Yeah. And so, um, OK, so this seven new emails is in the correct place. Because I have this UI toolbar, UI emails, and UI email. And those are each of the three different um, panels, or blades, however you want to call them, in the, uh, in the animation. Right. So let's actually give these some color. 
color. Yeah, I think that'll be helpful. Um, Just so then we can visualize what each one is. Gray, white, five. All right, let's see how this one looks. Oh. Uh, let's see, RGBA, white, 0.5. You would think that like having a white on top of a white would make it a little wider. Is that not work? <laughs> No. Oh wait a minute! Wait you're, a minute. you're not you're not opacitating. Opacitating. <laughs> That's all right. So I need to opacitate, right? Or opacit. Uh, Is that... That's not a word, but we're gonna make it a word. Uh, uh, ben Ben Fluick in the chat asks uh, if we are doing JS interactions later, wouldn't it be better to use MS uh, milliseconds on the transitions unless we're interacting? unless we aren't interacting with those elements in JS. Uh, yeah, for this loading animation, it's it's all just going to be CSS, and it's just triggered by the, the uh, data attribute change. So there's not really a need to sync it up with the uh, with the JavaScript or anything. Even, even so, I just find seconds a more pleasing unit to use. You don't have to worry about um, <laughs> converting in your head uh, to real real units. Sometimes I like to use bold colors in order to um, work with things. That's one of my techniques in you know, just doing code. And when I don't want to bother with what color things are, I'm just going to you know, set it to a nice blue or green or purple. So oh, um, yeah, here's the toolbar, and we have the uh, emails, and this is some country's flag. I'm not sure which country, but it's one of them, I'm sure. It looks like a country. Yeah. We should make our own animation country. Key, key frame, key, key frame, frame opia. Key, key frame, frame yeah, here we go. Getting some word out on on Twitter here, and we're gonna be fully back in the code. All right, cool. So now, if you click the background, everything looks pretty much close, at least layout wise, to uh, what we're going for. If you've noticed, yes. Clicking clicking through, uh, we're getting all the all the state transitions uh, as we should um, the only issue here is the initial state is wrong uh, so yeah is it all right if I fix that while you continue working yeah go for it okay uh, let's go ahead and it's pretty straightforward Okay, so what I did there, uh, I hoisted app to the to the top, our our app query selecting, uh, so that I can then use that in machine. Uh, so I set the initial state to app .dataset .state. and if you haven't seen data set before, that is just a, a shortcut kind of to getting all of those data attributes off of an element and uh, it just makes your life a little bit a little bit easier are you actually doing the opacity now yep i'm opacitating each of the uh, screens so uh, gba whites make this point eight and so i'm basically just eyeballing it there's no rhyme or reason to why I chose these magic decimal numbers, but they seem to work just fine. Yeah. So, uh, so we're going to go with it. And, and all of those, uh, do have some kind of box shadow. I'll, I'll start adding that in. Um, oh yeah. I, I already added box shadow to each of the, actually, wait, did I not? No, not I didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Good call. Good call. Nope, that's not 
all out of the box shadow too, just because I don't want to feel left out. Uh, I'm gonna zoom out. Just By the way, this this RGBA syntax, if if you are not familiar with less or sass, this is a less and sass thing. So normally with RGBA, you have to give each one of those uh, RGB values, which is anywhere from zero to two fifty five. But just giving the colors easier. So yes. that's why I like using sex. And you're using rims. Did you did you set up rim uh, each rim to be uh, 10 pixels, basically? Um, I think by default, it's like 16 pixels or something like that, unless you change the overall font size yeah. on the HTML. Usually, usually when I'm setting up a, a full project, I'll actually um, do that uh, okay which I'm just gonna do it really quick to show what that what that looks like I'm just doing that up at the top um, I believe the correct percentage is 62.5% uh, mm -hmm. and that definitely scales everything down so we don't need to worry about it right now um, I'll, yeah. comment I'll, I'll change the UI heading just because that's supposed to be uh, bigger do you, do you so want to leave it as as 10 pixels or? Um, I, that's that, whatever you want. <laughs> that's, that's fine. We'll, we'll okay. leave it as is. Uh, and that yeah. way the user can decide based on their font size settings. All right, so this uh, UI heading is pretty annoying because whenever you click on the body, sometimes you accidentally select it. And so you could do user select none. And that's going to allow you to well, once it refreshes, it's going to allow you to not have that be accidentally selected. Hey, but what if I want to select it? Um, can't. No, that's too bad. <laughs> All right, cool. All right. So, I'd say we're about pretty, pretty close to being done. Yeah, we're in a pretty good spot here. But we're we're missing a very very huge part. No, looks looks good to me. We've got each of these states. We've yeah. got a beautiful animation right at the top here. Oh man, look at that. Uh, so looking at the original animation, it seems like all of these things like smoothly animate into each other. Huh. And so that's going to be fun impossible to out. in in CSS and in the web, right? Uh, you would think so, but we're going to be using something called the flip technique. And if, uh, if what, you're unaware, what the, what the flip are you talking about, David? Well, I'll tell you what the flip I'm talking about. The flip technique is a term coined by Paul Lewis of Google, and it stands for first, last, inverse play, which probably means nothing to you right now, but it's sort of an optical illusion that you could do where you could move an element from one place to the other by, um, for example, when you click the body, you're already on the next date. So it just jumps to the next position. But what you could do is right before the browser renders that final position on the screen, you could like shrink it or scale it. You could move it around and make it pretend like it's still in the first area or in its first position. And then you could say, okay, okay, go back to where you were before. And then it's going to smoothly transition at 60 frames a second, hopefully, over to its uh, its resting position. Now, David, this is sounding a lot like magic, and I do not choose to <laughs> dabble in the dark arts, so I, I, I'm i going to need your lead on, on this one. All right, no worries. So um, let me just grab the package that we're going to use first. It's called flipping, and it allows you to do this uh, automatically. Really, so I'm just going to add that flipping package over, and we're using the Web Animations API. So if you're using a browser that does not understand <clears throat> understand the Web Animations API, then unfortunately this won't work quite uh, yet. Well, yeah, sure, that that too. <laughs> and uh, so the way this is going to work is these the the seven new emails header; those are actually two completely separate elements. And the reason I did that was because this is how you would normally develop um, an application anyway. You would have like different screens and 
each one of those screens are going to have their own contained elements because having things self-contained is very important in app development. Um, and so that's why you have this duplicate seven emails or seven new emails type thing. Um, so in this layout, we don't know where everything is going to end up. You know, we can't really predict it. And even if we could predict it, it's very annoying to like, whenever we change the layout, then we have to change the animation. So instead we're going to be using the flip technique. Uh, so if you go to the HTML tab, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to add a data flip key. And this is just to identify uh, each of these elements. So I'm going to call this heading just because it's the heading. And Makes on the one before flip key, we're going to give it the exact same key. So the reason for this is the, uh, the flipping library is going to recognize like, oh, they, uh, these are pretty much the same elements. And so we want to smoothly transition between those elements. And so over here in the JavaScript, I'm going to add a new flipping instance, new flipping. This is all you have to do. And so what happens over here in the send um, method, this is what changes the layout. Whenever you set the attribute to something new, then the layout changes, of course. Uh, and so um, with the flip technique, what you want to do is you want to get the initial position of you know the flipped elements right before they change. So we could do that by just doing flipping.flip. And all that's going to do is read the position of each of these data flip key elements. And then once we set the attribute, or sorry, flipping.read, that makes more sense. And then once we set the attribute, the layout changes, but nothing is flushed. Like DOM updates aren't flushed over to your screen. They're not rendered yet. So we have a, a split second opportunity in order to make those, uh, those changes and do that flip illusion. So I add flipping.flip over here. Uh, and so now if you click through, you'll see it. The effect is very small, but or I, I don't know how your screen is set up. But. Yeah, it, it's it's subtle, uh, but you should be able to, <laughs> to see it right now. It's noticeable. Let yeah. me look at the original design and see what... Oh, well, in the original design, it's actually just as subtle. Uh, too. Right, it's it's really not much more um, than... But the point is, um, you have that shared element moving pretty much the correct way. Uh, let me go ahead and add like an animation, like an entrance animation to that... Um, at heading, let me do that. So let's see what happens. In the original animation, it just fades in from the left. Perfect. So um, animation fade in to right. That's a very descriptive name. Usually my animation names aren't really that long. Uh, and it looks like it lasts for like three seconds. Are you in the CSS here? Yeah, I'm in the CSS. Okay. Sorry. I, no, it's it's just hard to find the, the cursor. <laughs> uh, okay, I assume you are. Sorry, give me give me a, a waypoint here. Okay. UI screen half, UI heading? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to do ease out. Excellent. Sometimes I get ease out and ease in confused too. Um, I believe ease in, the best way to remember ease in is like, let's say you're stepping into a gas pedal. What's going to happen? Your car is going to accelerate. And then you're easing out means you're easing off or out of the gas pedal. Um, so you're going to decelerate. At least I hope that's correct. I'm pretty sure it's correct. <laughs> yeah. See, my right. the metaphor that immediately came to mind was easing into a hot tub. And then <laughs> when you get too hot, you ease. No, that doesn't work. I don't know. <laughs> uh, not exactly. Yeah. All right, so now hopefully this animation will just work correctly. Yeah, but it's a very stiff animation. And 
this is the problem with these uh, these keywords is that it's a predefined animation and if you look up the exact cubic bezier values it's a whole bunch of junk uh, like dot four seven one nine two and dot one oh oh three four something crazy like that and um, that's why I think a lot of people are confused about you know cubic beziers because it's like I don't know what these magic numbers mean I just know that if I tweak them a little my animation is going to be a little pretty so let me show you a quick little trick here. If you do cubic bezier, and so the first value is going to be. Imagine you have like two, um, like two little dots on that you know cubic bezier curve. You know what I'm talking about? I, it's sort of hard to describe. Here. I'm I'm showing the uh, cubic bezier dot com. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you have those two little dots, and so um, you know the first two values are going to be the for the first dot. And the last two values are going to be for the second dot. And so um, what I like to do is I like snapping those dots to an edge of um, the cubic bezier thing. And the reason why is because when things move in real life, they either slow down to zero or they start at zero. Or sometimes they do both. So um, let's see. Over Isn't that here. one of those thermodynamic laws? a body at rest <laughs> yeah, tend to, I mean, tends to stay much. at rest yeah so if i do x as zero and then y as like 0.5 here and then all right wait what do i want to do oh yeah i want to slow down to a stop so i'll have y at one i'm trying to visualize this in my head uh 0.5 which is and exactly then... why i use cubicbezier.com <laughs> Yeah. All right. So let's try that. I actually like that. What do you think? Uh, let's see there. Yeah. You see how it slows to like a stop, mm -hmm. like without it being too jarring. And so you just increase the duration, which I honestly love doing. It's definitely a good thing to do. Uh, yeah. So let it, me especially if you're if you're debugging an animation. Um, go go from milliseconds to seconds, and that'll really help you <laughs> figure out what's going on. Uh, but yeah, that's a that's a really nice easing, and let's just okay, cool. It. So it looks subtle. It's doing the correct thing. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. But now uh, there are some big parts that we're missing. We're missing the actual um, animation of the background here. Now this is a tricky part because. If we animate the entire elements directly, then everything is going to be squished. And um, like if we do transform like scale, then it's going to scale everything inside it, and that's not what we want. And of course, if we um, if we animate height or width, then that's just going to be a huge super performance. performance. Oh, yeah, low performance. Okay, low, very low performance, unless you have a a magic machine where you have a million processors and infinite memory or you have a browser that actually understands oh we could probably work on animating height performantly i don't know uh, so instead what we're going to do is uh in this ui screen hat i'm going to add what's called a background element uh i'm not sure if you used this before but it's basically just an element that takes up the entire uh, the entire parent and acts as the background. So, have you done that before? Uh, yeah, I've I've started using that uh, technique a lot. I I used it on uh, the past couple projects where I had some boxes like this that were transitioning in, uh, and I wanted the the content and the and the kind of box that the content is in to uh, to move separately. Yeah. So yeah, you're just setting it to 100% height, 100% width. And then here's the key, background color inherits. But because we're using RGBA, that might pose a problem. OK, so you're right. Um, so hey, here's what we're going to use instead. Um, this cool little thing I like to call CSS variables. And that way, on, uh, for example, the UI screen half, we could say um, the background is going to be 
screen. See what happens there. It's fucking look terrible. Oh. And just as expected, it looks just, terrible. Just like the GIF. And it works. All right, so now over here, this UI screen hat, UI screen full, instead of this background color, we could change that to feature. Uh. Yeah, it disappeared because um, I have an explanation, I promise. <laughs> Wait for it. Let's see, background color, fair PG. All right, let's take a look at why it disappeared. Uh, real quick. Um, let's see, we have that UIPG, background color there, P2. Um, Is it due to the SAS? No, I don't. Th oh, is it? No. I don't think so. Yep. Yep. Check it out now. Sad. What'd you do? I, I changed <laughs> it from RGBA white to the actual RGB values. Uh, so 255 is, is the max <laughs> value there. I, I believe what was happening is uh, SAS was uh, refusing to process that because it it is a CSS variable. Um, so it was just leaving it as a string. Oh, okay. So you're completely correct. I'm completely stupid right now. <laughs> but that's okay. All right, so what I did was I added a background element to every single um, every single one of these. Uh, so actually, the loader may look off now. So for UI loading, we're going to do uh, DG as it's just white for now. Okay. Is it? Uh, nah, something's overriding it. Ah, okay, so let me go ahead and move this. So dot UI screen. There we go. Uh, which, uh, which in the comp, it it is actually uh, transparent. Um, it's not. It's not a full. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, then. Yeah. The yellow. the full white right. doesn't come in until um, the seven new emails. Uh, that makes sense. State. Okay, is your loading animation still showing? Yes, it yes. is. Beautiful. Okay, cool. So now that I have each of these background elements in each one of these screens, uh, we could give, I'm in the HTML tab right now, we could give each one of these a data flip key of, you guessed it, the exact same thing. It doesn't matter what you put there. Um, BG, blah, whatever. doesn't matter. Mm. Booger won't work. I have I have a special filter for boogers, so. Uh, but you, you said anything, so. Okay. Okay. We'll name them boogers then. Boogers. Okay. Cool. So now, go ahead and click through and see what happens. Hey, look at that! We have a little bit of movement here. Yeah. The uh, loading state to the uh, halfway state is is definitely smooth uh it's a little strange on the uh full state or transitioning from half to full yeah so let's talk about how we're going to do that um what i'm thinking like i'm, I'm going back and forth on this uh gif animation and so what happens is that um number one our background thing's correct it expands completely uh to where it's supposed to go and then you have the other three just um, sort of coming in from the center a little bit. Yeah. Uh, this, so th this is to... a this is a point where I would vary from the comp given to me by a designer uh, to improve it uh, by <laughs> by making uh, the background from seven new emails the halfway step uh, transition to that that uh, right side panel. Uh, versus how there's kind of a, a new background that comes in. Uh, right. When when it's all transitioning super fast, no one's ever going to notice that. Uh, but looking at it at this speed, it would feel much more natural if the um, the background for just seven new emails transitioned over there, and then the other panels came out behind it. Right. 
which should be easy in this in this case. In theory, we can just move UIBG with the key boogers into UI email. And let's see how that goes. Yeah, there's there's other things happening here, but yeah, that that seems right. Okay. So um, what I was thinking too is um, since we have three different backgrounds, and actually, can I can I try an idea real quick? Oh, Let me sure. just move the boogers right back up to the screen. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Um, what I'm thinking we could do is we could. Um, I was going to say we could fade in the background, but uh, obviously we need background elements for each one of those. Uh, actually really only two things this emails thing and this email thing and we're not going to flip them we're just going to have them be there and just be the background and actually they're the correct color right now so that's that's cool mm -hmm. and then so in this uh, data state equals full uh, for each of those UI backgrounds and I'm just going to do UI BG um, I'm in the CSS right now. Uh, we're just going to give them a nice fade in animation just for now. Uh, fade in 0.3 seconds. And should we make it delayed? I don't know. Uh, like staggering them? Or. Yeah, no. yeah. Do you want to stagger them? Well, uh, maybe not. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's try raw natural. And fade in. This is probably an animation that I've typed a million times. They should just build it into CSS. It really should be. Okay. And so now let's see. Let's see how that looks. That does nothing. Yeah. What I do? Hold uh, on. Um, what you could do in order to inspect this is open up the animation dev tools. I don't know if you've done that before. I, I've messed with them a little bit, but it's it's not something I just go to. Uh, I haven't uh, so found what a good happens workflow for it yet. Is they they all happen at the same time? Uh, oh, I know what's happening. Okay, so each one of those, um, the uh, UI, what was it? The UI emails and the UI email. Uh, they already have a background, and that's obviously why it's not looking like they're animated. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, change those just to my CSS variable, BG. And so we'll also need to uh, move the box shadows to, um, to the BG instead um, of, uh, okay. of the box itself, which I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, you, okay. you can keep going with the BG. Yeah. Checking the comments are good. Uh, the fading is not good. Hmm. Well, I mean, we could change that. It's just a nice, simple animation for now. Uh, Which okay, what's what's happening with the box shadows? It looks it looks fine up until the uh, full state. Hmm. Oh, as in they're visible. Well, just so, visually how it how it looks in the in the final state. I don't. Let's see. Uh, all right, let me see what you're doing real quick. So in UI email. Uh, All right, so I'm inspecting the background for email. Uh, let's see what's happening. Oh, it, it looks like the box shadow is not actually doing anything. Um, that's weird. Let's see, right up there. 
let me just change one thing, he said. It'll be <laughs> fine. Yep. This is what happens. It's OK. No. So what are you looking oh, at right now? Oh, okay. I know what it is. Uh, so we have overflow hidden on uh, on UI loading. Uh, ah, okay. So that that's all it is. Never mind. Carry on, everyone. Good job. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Do a nice hack here, real quick. UI loading inner. Just contain all of the things. All right, so yeah, um, we should change the flip. Um, or sorry, not the flip, the fading thing. Just because you know how something grows on you? Uh, what What's the opposite of that? It's happening with me right now. Uh, more more it like grows a... grows off. It, sh it shrinks more, on More you. like a wart growing on you. It's <laughs> yeah, not, this, not ideal. This thing is uh, shrinking on me. If that makes any sort of sense. All right, so let's... Okay, I'm going to add a nice little transform. Still looks weird. Uh, so you're you're just trying to slide out those those panels, uh, like in the animation? Sort of. That... Yeah, I, I'm trying to mimic the animation. Okay. Um, so it's not exactly doing. All right, UIBG. So what I would try here is. Transform translate x 100%. Um, let's see, why is that? Okay, let's see. Hmm, that's still. Whoa, strange. You, yeah, that's going pretty far. <laughs> yeah, hold All right, on. so let's see. Looking at what happens, it comes in from the center, right? Yes. And so uh and fifty percent. Yeah. And we, you know it, it looks like all of our <laughs> backgrounds are transitioning. Um so I think there's an issue with your knot here. Um let's see. Well yeah, so I, I sort of want all the backgrounds to do something. Or do do you want to target specific ones? Uh okay, so I think the Let's see. Doot, doot. Uh, let me do something real quick. Display none, so we can see what's actually happening. Okay, so you've got that that background expanding the full width. Um, so I think what what needs to happen is instead. Okay. Transform. Translate x. Fifty percent. And then move that from the keyframes. And then down here, get a little more specific. UI email, UI BG, transform, translate X, negative 50%. And this way, these, these two should be coming from this direction. And this one should come out from the oh, right. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it looks a little busy, but I mean, this is definitely uh, the closest we've got. <laughs> yes, it, it's it's a little bit better, and and it might be um, part of the issue is uh, doing opacity and 
uh, transforms at the same time in the same animation, um, it, especially when you're doing like fancy easing. Um, what I'll typically try to do is uh, spread those out into two different animations. PG fade, mm -hmm. and then from opacity zero. And I usually just leave off the two on, on a fade animation because it's, uh, in, in case you have an element that already has an opacity like 0 0.9 or something like that, uh, just leaving it off will allow it to transition into the, uh, the correct opacity rather than having to create a distinct animation for each one. Linear, that, that CG makes sense. move, 0.5 seconds. Um, let's go ahead and both here. So yeah, that looks that looks pretty good right now. Yeah, that's feeling much better. Now because uh, man, because you don't really see the whole flip thing on the seven new emails because it barely moves, I'm just going to do something for fun. Uh oh. And I'm gonna add a mail icon right over here. Are you changing the transform origin? Yes. Uh, now, what's the order of the properties? Is it always horizontal, then vertical? Yeah, horizontal, then vertical okay. for most things. Just think uh, in a graph x, y. Um, but it's not horizontal, vertical for some CSS properties. Exactly. Which is weird. Makes no sense. try here is actually removing the fade and let's just see what that looks like with just transform that's pretty good I think it needs to be a little faster or the the other BG needs to be a little slowed down Feeling pretty good. Might want to slow it down. Uh, sorry, looking at the chat now. Might want to slow it down so easier to follow the animation for te testing. Um, yeah, uh, I think we're at a at a good spot now. Don't don't need to slow it down at the moment. So next, yeah, I've used the animation inspector, and I pretty much use it all the time. It's one of the best things that Firefox and Chrome have built. And one of the best things that I'm working on convincing Edge to build too, but they won't. At least not right now. I hope they do one day though. That is feeling rather good uh, so far. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, so explain to me again with the with the flipping uh, where the actual animation or, or transitioning of uh, the UI BG uh, booger is is happening is that is that a CSS transition or is that uh, a setting within flipping uh, so you're asking basically how it's moving how flipping is right actually doing the moving uh, so right now it's using the web animations API that's, and so that's right yeah, so if you open the animation inspector, um, you could actually see this in action, which is pretty cool. Okay. 
And so if you flick from one state to the other, you see how it's, you know, going like pretending that it's the initial state and then uh, moving back to its final state. I know that sounds confusing. I have slides on these, though, so I'll just show those. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm, uh, because of all the state transitions, it's a little hard to, to capture the, the animation sometimes. Um, let's yeah. see. Let's clear that. Clear these out just so I can show everybody real quick. broken everything i'm terribly sorry everyone <laughs> but yeah there so i mean the rest is just adding the other ui items um do we want to go ahead and do that or do we want to actually one thing that we could add is the um the staggered entering of the actual emails mm -hmm. so what i'll do is i'll add the html for each of those emails and uh you could stack with them. Should be pretty straightforward. Okay. Let me uh, look at the comp again to see. Okay, so they're doing a slight slide in as they fade. That's easy enough. Let me see. Yeah, after after we do the the emails, um, we can we can uh, go okay. into overview mode. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So let's just do it real quick. Um, this is a perfect opportunity for Emmett. Yeah, it is. All right, so, uh, man, naming things is hard. Uh, dot UI email item. And then inside that UI email item, we're going to have a uh, UI sender plus a UI date plus a UI subject plus a UI body. And we're going to have, well, let's not make a million of these yet because I actually have to add the information. All right, so these emails are worded pretty funny. All right, so let's do Noah. Why, why, Noah. Don't, we, uh, why don't we get people from the chat here? Add, okay. add in some of our, some of our users here. Uh, holler at us if you haven't chatted for a while so we can, we can get some additional names. All right, let's do... Sasha Tran. All right, I'm gonna start styling okay, these yes. a little bit. Um, Nexi. Um, all right. What are we looking at? All right. UI sender. By the way, I renamed dates to time because that's obviously a time, not a date. <laughs> okay. Good and that's that's how you know that the coffee is wearing down. So. Okay, and now this this would be a, a good opportunity for grid, but hey. Um, down a little bit uh ui time yeah you can either use grid or you could just make it simple and absolutely position the time and everything else is blocked yeah so So I went with flex really quick because that should allow us to get this layout pretty easily. I'll break that down in just a second. Yes, perfect. Uh, yeah, so what I did, display flex with flex wrap set to wrap uh, so that the, the uh, items will go down to the next line. Uh, and then on, let's see, UI sender, I need flex, flex auto, and then flex go zero. Yeah. All right. Anyway. 
I'm doing them just for you. <laughs> Aww. Uh... All right, so I'm adding a UI dash email dash item dash dash after. And so, or actually selected, sorry. And so, yeah, you would just make a little red uh, thing on the side for those. Uh, I think I think we have a few more people in the chat. Uh, you can add in if you're if you're at a stable state with the uh, classes. Okay. Yeah. Um, here, let's copy pasta. Also. And I should say that the code we are writing is not what we would call production ready. Uh, after <laughs> after doing a, a quick uh, session like this, I would I would always go back and and clean things up uh, to uh, work with proper proper classes and and uh, not hacking the layout. All right, we want to commit that. Let's do trim. We would also do like a text overflow ellipsis. Oh yes, good call. Um, By the way, the mess, the content of the email subject and body in no way reflects the uh, sample participants. Good, good disclaimer there. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Test overflow ellipsis. Is that correct? Uh, how do we do the text overflow there? Text overflow ellipsis with white white space no wrap. Yeah, you would do white space no wrap and then um, overflow hidden and then it's sort of like a cocktail of things you need to do in order to get the ellipsis. Overflow hidden, uh, white space no wrap. <laughs> White space has a dash. No wrap does not have a dash. The reason for that is, I'm sure there's a reason. No. And then uh, text not. overflow ellipsis. Jeez. So, a lot of fun things. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so that's that's good for a super simple um, view there. Let me let me tone that. Yeah. Well, let me let me look at a real font size here, because oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's pretty tiny. Yeah, right sorry. Now. Um, that's okay. I've got everything scaled up. By the way, a fun little distinction. Um, in my code pens, I use header for things that are well headers, huh. and headings, ing instead of er for the actual big texts that you see, like H1, H2 tags, those are headings, not headers. Yeah, I that's my naming convention as well. Uh, did yeah. you break something with the layout? Uh, it wasn't me, it was you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yes, apparently. Uh, so yes, I did. Uh, widen this column a little bit. 
to match the, the comp a little bit more. Um, let's see. This is awesome that we have like both you and I coding at the same time because it's like twice as fast, I think. In, in theory. In, in theory. Yeah. Uh, the rule of thumb though is that um, the more coders you have, the slower it goes. Have you heard that joke where it's like what one coder could do in a month, seven coders could do in seven months <laughs> or something like that. That's very, very true. Yeah, and most most of that is is just the complexity of ramp up time and um, and trying to get everybody on the same page, coordinating everybody, all that, all that yeah. fun stuff. Okay, so now in our data state equals full, I'm going to start adding some animation for the email items. Email item. Oh, one thing real quick. Since our first view is going to um, be the loading view, yes. but these are still in the background, the animation is going to be applied immediately. Uh, it's just a weird thing with CSS. So um, you would have to move this animation declaration uh, over to the data state, oh, which you're already doing. Yes. Right? Wow, you're way ahead of me. OK. <laughs> well, hey, it's it's helpful to explain uh, exactly why I'm doing that. Right, yeah. That's something I've run into a lot where I'm like, why isn't this animation working? And it's because the animation has already started and already completed, uh, you know, before I even get to the screen. <laughs> so, uh, okay, let's do both. And let me find your fancy SAS code and do a little copy pasta. So we can add some nth child delays. Whoa, that was interesting. Okay. Whoa, that's. <laughs> Did uh, you do it randomly? No, I'm. How that worked? <laughs> I'm doing. <laughs> I'm doing it the the same as uh, as the blocks. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Uh, one one handy tip as well in CodePen, if you select everything and then uh, hit, sh what is it, Shift Tab? Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, Shift Tab, it'll clean up your code for you. Oh, yes, uh, Santiago Mc McRib in the chat is pointing out that there are seven new emails, but we only have five listed. All right, uh, all right, so we I'll, need we need a few I'll more names. Chime in on the on the chat so we can we can get you plugged in there. Okay. I think we've got an <laughs> uh, a Lannan br we can we can add in there and a few others. All right, I'll add a couple. And then, <laughs> uh, little bird girl, I believe that's Savs yep, is uh, is yep. saying we are change we're now changing the name of this stream from key framers to key blamers. <laughs> I think that that name is already changed. <laughs> A long time ago. Okay, what what is happening with with the nth child? Is let me see. One thing we can always do is view compiled CS. Huh? It's actually not showing me the compiled code. Oh, ah, that's what it is. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> Santiago McRib. Yes. I wonder if that's. Yes, thank you, Lannan Br. In the chat, was pointing out my my mistake of doing uh -huh. yeah okay. <laughs> from one through four. Um, 
And I should probably just take off the in there, and that'll that'll fix it. Um, and I'll go ahead and just add a few more in case there are extra emails. Uh, maybe some other time we can cover how to actually get around having a fixed number there. Yeah, so regarding the staggering, what if we, um, because right now we're waiting for each one to stagger, so what if we made the interval a little bit shorter? Uh, yes, uh, and, and the animation itself could be could be shorter for sure. There we go. Yeah, and oddly enough, the height is weird somewhere. That's feeling pretty nice. Um, and it, again, um, separating the opacity animation from the movement animation is is going to be a good choice there. Yeah. So it doesn't look perfect, but it's looking pretty good. We got all of our got all of our animations that we wanted in there. Yeah. I think this is a this is a great uh, spot to just kind of take to overview what we've done. Let's let's go ahead and set yeah. the uh, data state back to what was our first state? Loading. Loading. All right. Yep. Okay. So we can see how our app starts out. Hey. Wow, that's very slow. <laughs> well. And by it's by oh, performance, <laughs> by overview, I mean uh, going back and tweaking everything to make it feel nice. Yeah, no, that feels a lot nicer now. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and talk about what we've done. So first, uh, we had Shaw who created the loader, and you want to talk about that? Uh, yeah, the the basic premise here, uh, we didn't need grid we didn't need flexbox we didn't need anything fancy we just uh, used display inline block and uh, text line center and all of that to uh, get the the layout of the blocks we wanted uh, and then the staggering was was relatively simple we didn't have to um, do anything too complex just a simple for loop in sass to add an animation delay based on the nth child um, number. And uh, let's see, okay, the, the keyframes down here, we use the animation timing function within the actual keyframes to get the kind of uh, ease in and ease out effect that we wanted. And uh, that felt really nice. Um, what I'm, what I'm doing, <clears throat> what I'm doing right now is adding um, a, a negative animation delay to it so that uh, when you initially land on it, like if I change something here and it refreshes, you'll see it kind of starts with the squares visible um, versus how the, the squares were coming in before, just so that there's a little more action right off the start. Not necessary, but, but pretty cool. Um, and yeah, as, since we're overviewing right now, if you have any questions about about this or anything that we that we put together, uh, now is a great time to to ask that because we can we can explain that for you. So, type up in the chat if you have any questions. Yeah, okay. I just realized my Twitch email isn't verified. <laughs> ah, so working that... on that, but I will totally answer via voice. Yes, it, it's funny. I could talk to you, but I just can't chat with you. <laughs> Why? Because my silly email. Well, I have the uh, censoring settings up very high, so all of those F-bombs you've been dropping have, have not come through. Uh, yeah, and, and that's the simple loader. Um, and while I was doing that, you were putting together a finite state machine. Is that is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, for those of you who are unfamiliar, number one, learn it. There's <laughs> lots of resources that I'm, uh, I've been putting out. Number two, it's just a fancy switch statement. So you could think of it that way, where you're in a, you're in a state, and so we start off in the loading state, and um, which is loading, or app data set dot state. Um, and then we determine when we click something, 
we go to the half state and then when we click on half we go to full and then full loading so you could sort of imagine what this looks like uh you know you're just cycling through each of the states and uh yeah so all i'm doing is i'm looking up the next date and we're going to it and, uh, designing your app display in css and html is a whole lot easier than trying to uh, figure out like oh what javascript incantation do i have to call in order to get things in the right position at the right time you could just design things in each state and then worry about the rest later I'm on board with that. I've, I've been trying to integrate this technique since we um, have, have been talking about it lately and haven't fully gotten there yet, um, but I, I definitely see the merit of, of leading states into each other and uh, kind of having one source of truth for your states, not having to uh, manage all the, all the random stuff. Right, yeah. Uh, a thousand different booleans being toggled <laughs> off. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so yeah, again with the with the finite state machine, all that's doing is changing this data state attribute, and then the actual um, content display is being changed in the CSS, uh, and that's these lines here around line twenty eight. Uh, you have every every state set to display none. Um, and position absolute, so it's not taking up any, any space. And then uh, whenever the appropriate state is toggled, uh, those are being turned on. And then, uh, so what do, we, what do we do next? With the seven new emails, just a real simple layout there that you, that you put together. How, how'd you accomplish the uh, seven new emails hanging off the edge, by the way? Um, oh, hanging off the edge. All right, so I did the same. Um, you use display flex, and then you center everything both vertically and horizontally. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the easiest starting point for me. And then you just translate everything like maybe I think I have like forty percent or so. Oh, that's so I'm, that's I'm right. You've got 30. the you've got the animation fade in to right, uh, and the yeah. and it's transforming to uh, translate x 30 percent. Right, right. So you know, in case the designer looks back on this and sees the error of their ways by making it offset, they'll be like, "Oh, uh, I want that centered instead." And that's only a matter of removing that transform. Yeah. All right, and then at that point, uh, we started integrating uh, flipping um, so that we could start getting these, these transitions uh, where seven new emails would move from its current spot into the new position. Uh, and we also adapted all of the uh, backgrounds of the elements into standalone elements. So right here, yeah. We've got the, the UIBG element for the loading state. We've got a UIBG for the half state and a UIBG for the screen full state. And all of those are given the same data flip key. Uh, same with the UI heading. It's given a, a data flip key uh, mm -hmm. to match the other one in the full state. And with flipping, You've got a flipping instance up here at the top, and in your in your send, uh, which is the finite state machine function that's actually handling the event uh, transitions, uh, you have a flipping dot read, which gets the position of all of the elements with data flip key attributes right before the change. Right before the change, and then and then you set the new attribute to uh, to the current state and then you tell flipping to flip it yep is that all correct that's correct so in Excellent. flip of course it does it calculates the delta so how far the elements moved and how much they changed size and then it does the correct math calculations to make it look like it's transforming from what it was before to what it currently is 
So that's exactly. what Flip is doing. And we have Sarah Drasner joining us in the chat. Hello, Sarah. Glad to have you with us. Uh, please don't look over our code. Uh, oh, it's, please don't. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing. Uh, but hey, we did it. And and should should we post a code back now? Uh, yeah. Here, let me let me toggle it over to public, and we'll we'll get this uh, link live here in the chat. Um, yeah. We we know some of the styles could be refined, and this is usually what happens uh, when we're creating a complex animation. We would get the big ticket items out of the way first, which is the general layout, the individual animations, and just you know the position of everything, and also the logic of how things work. So going from state to state, and then. Uh, we would later just refine and get everything pixel perfect. Yes. Is is pixel perfect still a thing? I hope not. <laughs> uh, we're we're getting everything relative unit perfect. Yes, exactly. Responsive perfect. Responsive perfect. Yes. Awesome. Responsive. <laughs> Response fix. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> we we can we can riff on that. Um, yeah. Figure out a good. A good one. Um, okay, and then nothing, nothing too special for the uh, for the emails. Um, some of the same techniques you saw before. Um, I noticed we did not add the item selected state, so you can talk while I get that in there. Um, ah, um, talking, talking. What are we talking about? Uh, <laughs> just the the full state is what I've got pulled up right now. Right, 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 right. So, uh, yeah, we're just using SAS to stagger those. And of course, you could use an animation library such as um, GSAP or Anime, or um, actually, there's a bunch of them, or Pop Motion, too, um, in order to do that staggering. Or you could just do it in SAS. The downside. And I'll, I'll admit this, the downside of doing it in CSS and SAS is that pretty much you have to know how many elements you have ahead of time. So right now we know that we have seven emails and um, this person will only have seven emails for the rest of their life uh, because that's how we programmed it. It's a feature, not a bug. Yes. And so we, we, we could iterate through each of those seven emails and um, use SAS to set the delay uh, to increase for each of those emails. Um, so obviously you cannot do this when you have a dynamic number of items and you can't really predict how many there are gonna be beforehand. And that's when you would reach for something like GSAP or, or Velocity or Anime or uh, Tween Rex or Pop Motion or the Web Animations API or, gee, I don't know, there's a ton. <laughs> Uh, yeah, in, instead of uh, inbox zero, we've got it locked into inbox seven. And I, I mean, I'm personally fine with inbox seven. Yeah, it's a reasonable it, amount. It's it's sort of like you know how you you shouldn't pay your credit card in full every month. You you want to leave a little bit of balance. Yeah. And so we could apply the same philosophy to emails. You know, leave a few emails unread. Make the person anticipate your response. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to get that uh, <laughs> little border looking looking nice. Um, it's difficult, of course, because we are working in CSS. I also noticed that the uh, the header of the email in the full state it doesn't it's... really animate; it just stays there. Yeah. Uh, so one one. That's just an easy way to, uh, to do that is to, let's see, where is it? UI dot UI header, adding that. Whoa. Uh oh. Let me see. Did I break something? Probably. Okay, there we go. But you could blame me. Got it's it. Okay. okay. All right. Hey, that's looking good so far. Uh, 
All right. Uh, let me see if there were any questions in the chat. Hmm, I don't think so. Uh, Lannon BR says, uh, say I was loading data in dynamically from the network in this instance. Would you switch to the new state, state say, in a callback or when a promise resolves? Oh, that's a really good question. So referring to state machines. All right, so let's say you were loading in data dynamically from the network. Um, basically, in this state machine, I have things changing whenever you do a click. So you could change that, and I'm going to go ahead and change that to, um, I'm going to call it data loaded. So pretend that this data loaded thing is just some random event coming in, uh, you know, to uh, like from your promise. And so you, you would basically do the same thing here. You would do a send data loaded. And actually, you know what? let me go ahead and do that. So we're going to, I'm in the JavaScript right now. I'm, um, what am I going to do? Set a timeout where I send data loaded after, let's say, three seconds. All right, so we're in the loading state, and it's going to show the loading animation, and then it's going to go to the data loaded thing. Very nice. And then let's also, I, I mean, we're mocking everything right now. So now let's say um, we have a uh, or show email, where show emails rather, and that happens after four seconds. So we send the data loaded event, and then we send the show emails event. So show emails. Change this back to click. And so now, um, if you refresh, you'll see that it goes automatically uh, to the second state, and then after four seconds, it goes to the third state. So tweaking the values a little bit. Yeah, just playing with it there. Yeah, and so that's one of the great things about finite state machines is that all you have to do is send these events. That's all. These events could come from anywhere, hopefully from you know somewhere predictable, and um, you have this these rules uh, that determine what shows whenever an event is sent. Very cool. All right. Uh, last last call for questions. Uh, let us know if there's if there's anything else you have. Um, curiosity about or um, just want more information on how we how we did it um, we'll we'll be posting the uh, the code pin on on Twitter and um, and sharing this uh, this video again um, so you can go over it and ask us questions later but for now uh, Steve G asks gif or gif <laughs> and I, I think, think I think he's correct question. yes he is correct Yes. I pronounce it like it's spelled. I will <laughs> tell you that much. Awesome. Uh, let, let me go through the animation one more time for funsies. Yeah, hey, make it a, let's make the screen a little wider. I set it to viewport units so that, you know, it looks a little bit nicer. Excellent. I'm I'm seeing now that the uh, the background transition is definitely a bit a bit much. Uh, so rather than fifty percent, <laughs> I'm gonna tone that down to like twenty percent. Since we're doing a fade in with it as well, that that should be should be plenty. Yeah. Shaw prefers reduced the animation. What? Oh, well, <laughs> yes. Which is a very important media query to add, by the way. Yeah. And and I've started doing it as a um, as a JavaScript check as well. Um, when I'm okay. going to be integrating, yeah. um, you know, some some JavaScript animation or like a three D background or or something crazy like that, I'll do a simple media query check to uh, to toggle that. Right. 
And one other small change here. UI full, where are you? And sometimes people think these accessibility things are rare, like um, vestibular motion prefers reduced animation. But number one, if I mean, if you're drinking all night and you're on your phone and you're really, really, really drunk, you really don't want to see anything moving around like crazy. Or if your phone is on low battery, then you definitely don't want to see animations because animations, believe it or not, suck up your phone's battery very, very quick. So if you're on 5% and you have to go on this website for some reason, you know, make sure you have prefers, uh, prefers reduced animation set to kill all currently running animations so that you don't kill your user's battery inadvertently. Very sage advice. Yeah, thank you, Landon BR. He says, I'm impressed all of this was done and basically just based on the dribble animation in only two hours. Yeah, a little, yeah. little longer than we were than we were shooting for, but as you get into it, you you find all sorts of little little things that you're gonna run into. Um, and that's pretty much always the case. So. Mm -hmm. All right, well, yeah, I think I think that's about a about a wrap. I don't think there's anything else. Um, to, to cover on this. Um, yeah, so um, before we leave, I just want to let you all know that uh, Sean and I are part of the Animation Network community. And so if you're tuning in and you're not part of that community, um, let us know, we could get you invited, I think. I'm not too sure how that works, but- It's, um, it's a public uh, invitation. It's it's okay. not hidden. Uh, I'll, I'm looking up the link right now and I'll, I'll post that. Um, yeah, it's a it's a Slack. So if you love animation and have too much free time during the day at work, then it's a great place to be, and a great place to chat with coworkers. Even even if you don't have free time at work, uh, <laughs> the the community is uh, super helpful and loaded with uh, people like David and myself. Uh, Sarah Drasner's there as well as Rachel Neighbors. Is that how you pronounce her last name? Yeah, Rachel Neighbors. Uh, uh, the, there's a whole bunch of super, superstars there. <laughs> right, and and so when you're running into an issue like that, is one of the top places to ask to get get some feedback. Um, Nexi is always super helpful. Um, Notorious mm -hmm. V1T, all all those uh, all those helpers in there. So yeah, definitely recommend checking that out. Um, it will it will come in very very handy for your next project. All right, shall we bring it to a close? Let's bring it to a close. Okay, let me get some, some music in here. <laughs> so, you've been watching Keyframers, the animated collaborative, collaborative coding live stream where we bring imaginative user interfaces to life. Yeah, follow us on Twitter and Twitch at, at Keyframers to get notified when we'll be streaming next. We're going to try to do this every week. So, uh... We'll also have this video available soon for those who didn't catch the full live stream. So uh, keep an eye on the Keyframes Twitter for the link. And if you enjoyed this premiere, and if you'd like to see more from David and I, uh, we did set up a Patreon. Uh, in case you are feeling generous, you can go over to patreon.com slash keyframers. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash keyframers and that'll help support us uh, so we can continue to release great content and kind of expand some of the stuff we're able to provide yeah and we're also accepting submissions for future episodes so this one we just chose randomly and we were like yeah that one seems nice and doable we actually just decided today <laughs> so nothing pre-prepared or anything like that and that's how pretty much every one of them goes we're just starting from starting from scratch uh, for every single episode. So, in order to um, to make a submission, just tweet at Keyframers with any animations. They could be from Dribble or... Actually, I just go on Dribble. But anyway, they could be any animations that you would like to see made. And we're going to try our hardest to make them. And that's all we have for tonight. So, thank you so much for tuning in. And we'll see you again next week. See you all.